I'm going to be using this shoe when I'm going out for a primarily a trail run, but I have to use the road in order to get to the trail. <laughs> So welcome back to the channel. Today I have a first impressions review of the Puma Fast Track Nitro. Now this has to be one of the best road to trail running shoes on the market at the moment for under £100. Um, so in today's video I'm going to go over the main specifications of this shoe, go over some likes and dislikes, finally some comparisons of where this shoe fits onto the market and maybe into your shoe rotation and yeah, share my first impressions on this shoe. So let's jump straight into it, onto the specifications. This shoe retails on the ProDirect website at £95. Just a bit of a disclaimer, this shoe was given to me, was gifted by Puma, um, but they've not seen this video and all my thoughts and opinions are very much my own. In my UK size 7.5 or EU 41, um, it weighs 260 grams, so it's a fairly lightweight trail shoe. In terms of drop, it has an 8mm drop. Now, I couldn't find anywhere online about the overall stack height of this shoe. But if I had to guess, I think it would be around 25mm in the heel, dropping 8mm in that forefoot. So again, a fairly medium um, cushioned shoe. Moving on to the outsole of this shoe, as you can see, it has three millimeter lugs and it has the Puma Grip ATR technology. The midsole on this shoe uses the Nitro Foam from Puma, along with a second foam called Pro Foam Light, I think. So it's made up of two different compounds of EVA, I believe. Um, for a yeah, dual density uh, midsole. Onto the upper, we have a rib stop mesh upper. Not really sure what rib stop means, but what I do really like about the upper is it has some drainage options. So if you're out on the trail and your feet go get wet, say in a puddle, there's areas in the forefoot that have been specifically designed to allow this shoe to drain. Um, I personally don't like uh, my trail shoes to be waterproof because it means if water does get in, say if you step in a puddle that goes over your ankle, then the water then can't get out. So I prefer a shoe that can drain really well, so it's good that that has been um, incorporated into the design. So moving on to my likes and dislikes. My first like, we'll start with those, is the overall lockdown of this shoe is really good. The eyelet chains are sort of built into the upper of this shoe and it also has a fully gusted tongue. Um, which has got a nice amount of padding. So I found it sat really well on top of my foot. I was able to get a good lockdown with the laces. Um, and that's really important for me in a trail shoe that my foot's not wobbling around on the sort of uneven terrain. I also got on really well with the Puma Grip. Um, I thought from first impressions, three millimeter lugs might not be enough for some of the terrain that I was running on. It was quite an aggressive trail. Um, there was areas of, of sort of algae cover. It was a little bit slippery, but the Puma Grip ATR performed really, really well on those terrains. I didn't slip at all. Another real plus point to this shoe is how versatile it was. So I was able to test it on the road, on the trail, on gravel, and it seemed to handle all the terrains pretty well. And the final thing I liked about this shoe is the price point. I think at 95 pounds, um, which is available now on the ProDirect website, if you'd like to check it out you can shop it via the link below and there's a lot of other shoes that I'll talk about in a, a little bit that sort of compare to the Puma fast track um, which come in at a little bit more money so in terms of value I think for a versatile sort of road to trail option this is a real contender so moving on to some of my dislikes overall this midsole was was very very good it performed well on the trails it was nice and stable it was a nice balance between being soft but and firm not too firm um, but I would say it lacked a little bit of the responsiveness, um, but in terms of trail shoes, you're not always looking for something that's going to really propel you forward like you are on the road. Um, so I think the fact that it was, it's more of a stable midsole is probably a good thing. And the only other thing I can think of in terms of dislikes is maybe this um, pull tab here on the back looks really nice and it's really handy if you want to attach the shoe to say you're at the back of your your hiking bag but I will say it does seem to be a little bit on the flimsy and I think if I really pulled on that when I'm putting my shoe on it may sort of rip off over time so finally some comparisons where does this shoe fit into the market and how does it fit into my rotation so I'm going to be using this shoe when I'm going out for a primarily a trail run but I have to use the road in order to get to the trail. In terms of other shoes on the market, the one that sort of I can compare it most to is the Pegasus Trail from Nike. 
Um, it has a very similar sort of feel to it. I would say, in my opinion, this Puma Fast Track looks a little bit nicer than the Pegasus Trail, but that's just my opinion. And it comes in at a Pegasus Trail cost £115, whereas this Puma shoe only costs £95. The only other shoe that I can think of that it compares to at the moment on the market is the A6 Nova Blast TR, the sort of road trail version that they just brought out. Um, I will say the A6 shoe feels a little bit more responsive. Um, it has a bit more of an aggressive uh, sort of get you onto your toes type feel than the Puma shoe does. But again, that costs £135, so a considerable £40 more expensive than the Puma Fast Track. So yeah, that pretty much summarizes my review of the Puma Fast Track Nitro, a really good shoe for people who are gonna be running on both the road and the trail. And I think at that £95 price point, it's, yeah, it's really, really affordable um, and you get a lot of shoe, a nice versatile shoe for your money. If you have any questions regarding the Fast Track Nitro, then drop them down below. One final thing to note, I would recommend maybe going half a size down because um, it comes up a tiny bit on the long side, but that's just my opinion. If you're somebody who prefers to have a little bit more room in your trail shoes for your toes to spread out, then probably true to size would be good. Um, but yeah, until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire, and we'll see you again soon.